Forget antibiotics, steroids, and medications. Starve mold out of your body. Illnesses caused by mold exposure are a growing problem that few people are aware of, including primary care physicians. Individual health experts are seeing increasing numbers of individuals with a complex myriad of symptoms directly related to mold exposure. This has resulted in the proposal of a new term to describe this multifaceted syndrome, mixed mold toxicosis. Accurate information can shorten your road to recovery. Unfortunately, there is no precise formula for rebuilding perfect health if you have been damaged by mold or its toxins. No one set of interventions will work for everyone. Treatment depends on many factors. The type of mold you were exposed to, length of exposure, your overall health, medication, allergies, genetics, and a host of other factors. Your best approach is to find a well-informed physician who has expertise in environmental medicine. Together you can devise an appropriate treatment plan based on your own unique physiology and situation. One excellent resource is the book Mold, The War Within by Kirk and Leanne Billings. The Billings learned the hard way about the damaging health effects of mold and the level of ignorance about mold effects by the medical profession as a whole. Living in a home in the outer impact zone of Hurricane Katrina, the Billings family suffered a progressive array of symptoms for which their physicians had no solution. They had discovered their illness was due to mold infestation in their home. What started as tightness and burning in their chest and itchy eyes soon progressed into severely diminished lung capacity, thyroid malfunction, and numerous other symptoms that did not resolve despite moving out of their home. After extensive research and eventually recovering their health, they wrote the book Mold, The War Within, hopes of educating a poorly informed and disadvantaged public about mixed mold toxic Many of the suggestions I'll be making comes from a direct result of the diligent footwork they have been kind enough to share in the form of a book, which we can all be grateful. Physicians all too quick with the prescription pen. In the early stages of their road to recovery, the Billings went through many physicians who either didn't believe mold was behind the, their suffering or whose treatment were little more than shots in the dark. When they did eventually find physicians who agreed their problem were related to mold poisoning, they offered little help other than prescribing dangerous antifungals and other drugs that contributed nothing to their recovery. It took years to find the help they needed. I suspect this experience is probably not unique to the Billings family as the treatment of mold-induced illnesses is an area for which most physicians are simply ill-equipped. All too often, drugs are prescribed that don't address the underlying problem and have side effects that further compromise immune response, further impairing your body's natural ability to heal itself. It's like pouring gasoline on a fire. The fact that steroids suppress your immune system is no secret. Just read the package insert or patient information sheet for any steroid medication. It will warn you that exposure to pathogens like chicken pox or measles while using the drug could result in serious complications, even death, due to immunosuppression. Asthma, like sinusitis, often has a fungal origin that is missed in children and adults, so it is often inappropriately treated by medical practitioners. Physicians usually prescribe cortisone and steroid inhalers if you or your children has asthma. In fact, cortisone has been one of the preferred methods of treatment of treating asthma in the U.S. since 1976, and since that time, the mortality from asthma has tripled in the U.S. The last thing you want to do if you have a fungal infection is suppress your body's ability to fight it. Yes, that's precisely what these steroid medications are doing. Antibiotics, the kind that target bacteria, will not kill mold in sinus cavities. So if more than 90% of upper respiratory infections are fungal and physicians are throwing antibiotics at them, this points to an enormous number of 
infections that are being grossly mistreated. Add that to a steroid nasal inhaler that suppresses your immune response and you have a recipe for a rampant fungal infection that can spread to the rest of your body and possibly progress into mixed mold toxicosis making you very ill. When the first round of antibiotics doesn't work, physicians will often try a very different antibiotic which of course won't work either because they are still not treating the right problem. It is understandable then how a person suffers this vicious cycle not only becomes more ill but also frustrated, depressed and hopeless about their situation. And these mood changes may lead to the next drugs to be prescribed. Antidepressants. Antidepressants. It's all in your head. Fungal toxins can affect your brain and if so, alter your emotional state. Neurological symptoms are commonly seen with mold toxicity. This phenomenon combined with the fact that mold exposure is often associated with physiologically traumatic environmental disasters such as hurricanes and floods makes for a complex clinical picture that can superficially appear to the uneducated clinician as depression, anxiety, or post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Therefore, it's not uncommon for people suffering from chronic mold-related health problems to be prescribed antidepressant drugs as if to say the problem is all in their head and lacks any psychological cause. If your psychological symptoms are caused by fungal and chemical exposure, an antidepressant will do nothing to neutralize the toxin causing your psychological symptoms, much less your physical symptoms. Antidepressants can do more damage than good and come with a slew of potential serious side effects to say nothing of failing to address the underlying cause. Antifungal drugs. Bye-bye liver. As a group, antifungal drugs are quite toxic, especially to your liver. For example, the drug Lamacil used to treat toenail fungus is so toxic that its manufacturer Novartis warns you in their product insert that Lamacil has resulted in liver failure. The need for liver transplants and death. Lamacil can also cause loss of taste or smell, depression, suppressed blood cell counts, skin reactions, and development of lupus erythematosus. Yet it is commonly prescribed for toenail fungus because it concentrates in nail tissue. The reason most antifungal drugs are so toxic has to do with the similarity between your body's cell membranes and fungal cell membranes. Fungal antibiotics attack the cell membranes of the fungus and when they do, they also damage human cell membranes. These are some of the most dangerous drugs on the market and are best avoided. Clearly, drugs are not the answer if you've been poisoned by mold. So, what is the answer? Cutting off the fungal food supply. It comes as no surprise to me that Kurt and Leanne Billings found the most beneficial intervention in their recovery was a radical change in diet. What they did was cut out every food that fuels fungal growth, namely sugars, grains, and grain-based foods, and simple carbohydrates. By eliminating bread, crackers, pasta, cereal, nearly all fruit, and anything made of refined white flour, they literally starved the mold out of their body. Fungi, including yeast and molds, need sugar in order to survive. So what you eat really matters. Since any organism living in your body depends on your diet to sustain it, fungi will thrive on a diet high in fructose, sucrose, lactose, and other sugars. This is not new information. Low sugar diets have been popularized in the battle against candida overgrowth, and mold thrive in similar conditions as yeast. It makes perfect perfect sense that people with fungal infections begin to regain their health when they begin taking away the fungus food supply. Sugar also suppresses the immune system and commonly contains mold contamination itself, which are two good reasons to avoid it, but cutting out sugar and grains may not go far enough. Top 10 foods to avoid if you have mold sensitivity. People who have been exposed to toxic mold can become sensitized in such a way that they react to a variety of different agents in their foods and environment as if they are allergic to them. It may take only a very minute exposure to trigger a major reoccurrence of symptoms. So you must take steps to make your environment as mold free as humanly possible so that you're not breathing fungi or eating fungi. 
There are several types of foods that should be avoided if you are mold sensitive because they are subject to mold contamination. In their book, the Billings included a list of top 10 mycotoxic foods compiled by David A. Holland, M.D. and Doug Kaufman. 1. Alcoholic Beverages Alcohol is the mycotoxin of Saccharomyces yeast and often contains other mycotoxins from mold-containing fruit and grain. 2. Wheat and all wheat products. 3. Rye. 4. Peanut. Often contaminated with dozens of mold types, one of which is cancer-causing aflatoxin. 5. Cottonseed and cottonseed oil. 6. Corn. Universally contaminated with a variety of fungal toxins. 7. Barley. 8. Sorghum. Used in a variety of grain products and alcoholic beverages. 9. Sugar from sugar beets. 10. Sugar from sugar cane. 11. Hard cheeses. Regarding peanuts, a 1993 study reportedly identified 24 different types of fungi just on the outside of the peanut in their sample, and these peanuts had already been sterilized. One of the mycotoxins frequently found on peanuts is aflatoxin, which is a known human carcinogen. In terms of hard cheeses, cheeses like Gouda are made with yogurt-type cultures such as lactobacillus rather than fungi, so these are a better alternative. There are often fungal components used in food manufacturing that are not necessarily listed on the label. Take soy sauce, for example. Authentic soy sauce is fermented by a fungus, which is what gives soy sauce its distinctive flavor. If your immune system is overly reactive, and sensitized, something like this can trigger a reoccurrence of illness as your body interprets it as a foreign invader and you jump back into the symptom producing antigen antibody cycle. The Billings wrote that they also reacted adversely to vinegar, beans, canned tomato products. Basically, the closer you stick to a basic diet of fresh organic vegetables, lean organic meats, and fresh pure water while recovering, the less risk you'll have of additional mold exposure and reactions. It's wise to avoid eating out because you just can't control what is put into your food unless you prepare it yourself. You have to go beyond being a good label reader and become a food detective. You may want to do some vegetable juicing to accelerate your healing. Juicing helps alkalize your body and for the most part fungi can't grow in an alkaline environment. Juices assimilate very quickly into your system with very little effort or energy by your digestive tract, like an intravenous infusion of whole food nutrition. Juices should be consumed immediately after being juiced, within 15 minutes is best, as the enzymes degrade rapidly thereafter. Probiotics, mold's worst nightmare. Probably the most important supplement for recovering from mold-induced illness is a good probiotic. Your gastrointestinal tract is your first line of defense against mold and its toxins, and having a GI tract populated with beneficial flora is crucial for optimal immune function. Probiotics help repopulate your GI tract with these beneficial bacteria. The good bacteria help keep the bad bacteria and other organisms like mold and yeast in check. This is why, as discussed earlier, antibiotics are so counterproductive if you have a fungal infection. Without the proper microflora, fungi and their toxins can break through the walls of your intestinal tract and enter your bloodstream. When your bowels is toxic, the rest of your body soon follows. Sensing the toxicity, your immune system reacts with a vengeance, trying desperately to overcome this perceived assault, which results in systematic inflammation. And when your blood is full of toxins, your organs responsible for cleansing it, liver, kidneys, skin, lymph, become overloaded and multi-system health problems can occur, which is what many people experience after mold poisoning. Your immune system produces antibodies to the mold, the antigen. If your overload is severe enough, you can experience serum sickness, which can appear as a severe, unrelenting, flu-like symptom. Worst cases can take years to resolve unless aggressive action is taken. It is important to remember that the catalyst for the entire illness is disruption of healthy intestinal flora. This is why paying careful attention to your GI health is so vitally important 
and a high-quality probiotic is helpful beyond measure. I just can't emphasize this enough. The Billings Magic Four. In their quest for effective intervention, the Billings sought the advice of a number of health care providers from different backgrounds and had a number of false starts, trying therapies that didn't end up working. If you are interested in the specifics of those, you can read their book, but there are far too many to include here. They eventually found the following Magic Four and credited these for advancing their recovery. Garlic. Garlic is a potent antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral, immune system stimulant, and detoxification agent. Garlic also helps clean out the respiratory tract. The best form is raw, whole garlic rather than a supplement derived from garlic, as it is the synergism of the whole food that makes it so clinically active. Eat the cloves whole or run them through a juicer alongside your veggies. Ginger. Ginger is also an antifungal and antibacterial. It helps dislodge congestion in your respiratory tract and is also a great digestive aid. Ginger also makes a great addition to fresh juice. Cayenne. Cayenne is a catalyst for the other herbs. Golden seal. Golden seal, with its active ingredient berberine, has antibacterial and immune enhancing properties. However, it should not be used for long periods of time. Another herb they found therapeutic is yarrow, which they use topically by infusing it in their bath water for relief from rashes, hives, and other skin irritations. Final recommendations. There are options if you suspect you've been poisoned by mold. And as usual, the natural approaches are much safer and more effective for restoring your health than antifungal drugs, antibiotics, and steroids, which are the worst options by far. Here are a few strategies I highly recommend incorporating into your recovery plan. Glutathione is your body's most powerful antioxidant and has even been called the master antioxidant because it maximizes the activity of all the other antioxidants. The best way to increase your glutathione level is by consuming a high quality whey protein. It should be cold pressed, undenatured, derived from grass fed cows and free of hormones chemicals and sugar. Omega-3 fats are also very important. From a mixture of plant and animal resources, the best source of animal-based omega-3s come from krill oil. Artichoke leaf extract. A study published in the Journal of Agricultural Food Chemistry in 2004 found that extract of artichoke leaf was toxic to many types of fungi, including both molds and yeast. Vitamin D. Research suggests vitamin D may prevent mold allergies, so make sure your vitamin D levels are optimal. Air purification. To ensure you are breathing the cleanest air possible, I recommend you avail yourself of an air purification system. Air can contain mold and mold spores. Among other toxic particles, my favorite are active purification systems that utilizes low levels of ozone.